Hello everyone and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5, where today I'm showcasing my very first full track speed build in the game. Now, I actually have been dying to bring you guys this track for quite some time now because I built it the day Forza Horizon 5 came out, but it's been such a busy time of year that I just haven't had the time to get the footage together to sit down and to talk you guys through it, which if you are new to the channel is exactly what we do here. This channel is dedicated towards the creative side of gaming, and a big part of that is the Speed Build series, where I try and create things from start to finish in different creative modes across different games, and then talk you through everything that I do, any tips I pick up, any advice I can pass on, and that's exactly what we're doing today with this circuit. So I split the video up into a few different chapters, which we'll experience as the next 28 minutes or so goes on. We're starting here just doing the fundamentals of the circuit, the key barriers, and things like that. Then we're going to move into more of a detailing and atmosphere focus, creating some of that event vibe that you like to see in Forza Horizon tracks. And then finally, we'll finish up with a lap of the circuit. And in the future, hopefully no, no further than next week, I'll be posting an actual race on this track. A bit of a shorter video, but you can see what it's like to race on. But the circuit itself is called Riverside Grand Prix. And I looked forever. I was honestly, I spent probably two hours looking for a place to uh, to make a racetrack on the map. And it wasn't because I was struggling to find one that I liked. It was more I couldn't pick between which area I wanted to build in the most. Um, and I ultimately settled on this one. And I took my time deliberately because I knew this was going to be a big build. I think in total it took me about three or four hours to put this together. Obviously a lot shorter for you guys with the speed build format. Um, but yeah, I knew it was going to be quite a big task. I knew I was going to be learning on the build as well. Like everything you're seeing right now is a bit, you know, it's a bit rusty or it's a, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit rough because I'm just getting used to the tools. And hopefully as time goes on throughout this build, you'll see me get a bit more comfortable uh, with what we have available. So I was very cautious about choosing something that wasn't going to be overly difficult. Um, and I wanted something that had a bit of elevation. I'm really happy with the layout, um, but I also wanted to make sure I wasn't building an environment with like super steep hills or anything like that that would have had to require me to sort of change the angle of every single asset. But in terms of my approach, I did have a little play around before recording and I, I I identified, I will get that out, that it was probably going to be best I put down the actual barriers on this circuit first before putting in the checkpoints because this track here, I'm trying to go for a fairly realistic street circuit vibe where, you know, the corners are pretty carefully crafted. It's not going to be completely closed in like you would expect at a real life racetrack, whether that's, you know, a normal racetrack or a street circuit. Um, but I definitely have barriers in the high risk spots and around corners and grandstands and all that kind of stuff. So I knew because the barrier placement was going to sort of alter the width of the track, the lines and all that kind of stuff. I thought, all right, I'm going to get the barriers down first and then I'll put the checkpoints in when I know what kind of uh, alignment each corner has. And here you can see an example of me getting used to the tools where there's a bit of a slope going on here. Um, look, if I was doing this corner at the end of the build, I probably would have gone back and being a bit more careful with my barrier placement. But fortunately, they're not sunk so far into the ground around this wide open hairpin that you're going to sort of climb over the barrier and into the fence. Um, but that's a really fun corner. And you saw I put a round sort of prop on the apex, which I use quite a bit for any hairpin complexes on this circuit. Um, and also whack the camera on top and more of that detailing is something that's going to come later on But nevertheless, it's like, you know, it's like a kid in a candy shop at this stage of the build there were So many assets um, compared to Super 7 in Forza Horizon 4 um, Which I never covered on the channel. I just sort of dabbled with in my own time um, And I didn't know what to expect with the blueprint builder in Forza Horizon 5 and I was so excited To see the number of assets we had available to us um, because they're wonderful and especially this catch fencing these fences here you know you can really make yourself um, a fairly realistic looking racetrack with the assets you have available which is just so cool and look I respect as well for or Horizon 5 it's you know meant to be a street uh, you know sort of like a street racer I get that but I also love the fact that they've catered for more serious style racing with some of the assets they have given us a momentary pause there 
anytime I'm building, it, it can get a little tricky sometimes to remember the way, you know, take a comfort break or a phone call comes through or something like that. But I do my best to make sure any long pauses are taken out of the speed build footage. Um, but occasionally you might notice a subtle pause of either interruption or quiet contemplation. Um, that one was almost certainly interruption though. <laughs> this corner wasn't too difficult to put together. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoying uh, some of the assets that are available in this mode. One of the big things I do as well is put some grandstands in uh, later on in the adventure, which you can see here right now. And these are really cool. Um, they really create a bit of an atmosphere. There's two, two grandstand types, one with a cover and one without. Um, and you can see I actually jump into the circuit and take it for a test drive as well. I've got the, the Toyota Supra there as my test drive vehicle. That's not the vehicle I, I ultimately allow for this circuit, I don't believe. Um, but at the time it was what I was using. Um, and it was a fairly good car. It was slow enough to give you an idea of what the track would be like in an underpowered car, like the Subaru BRZ, and also powerful enough so you had a rough idea of what it would be like in something a bit more uh, a bit more beefy, like the HSV that I've enabled uh, with the Supercars inspired style event. But anyway, here you can see I'm placing the barriers. Now I mentioned earlier, I put barriers in high risk locations. This is one of them. You can see the building has some pretty jagged edges on the inside there. And I wanted to make sure if any players ran wide or cut the corner too tight that they weren't going to run into a uh, a dead stop you know where something was just going to catch the car and stop them in their tracks i really really wanted to avoid that um because obviously it can cause huge pile-ups in racing um a problem real life racetracks have if a car gets caught in a uh, in an awkward position with a barrier um but also it's frustrating as well like, at least if you have an accident with careful barrier placement you should just grind across the barriers um, assuming the mistake is sort of small to moderate. Um, but yeah, you'll still be punished because Forza Horizon 5. So the, the way the physics works is that you will lose a lot of speed if you grind against a wall. Um, but I didn't necessarily want to punish the smallest mistakes by having cars stop in their tracks. And another thing I did to combat that was any time I was uh, placing these walls down on the outside, you would have noticed that uh, at least there's no snapping tool from what I can see, which is really, really frustrating. Probably one of the few flaws I can pick in this creative mode is the lack of a snap tool. Um, so anytime I had overlapping barriers, I always put the next barrier in the sequence just a fraction further back than the one before. It's hard to see at the speed the footage is going, um, but it just means that if there was a difference between the two barriers in terms of how they were aligned, if there was a difference, the, the jut would be on the opposite direction to what the driver would be grinding against it at, if that makes sense. Basically, there shouldn't be any jagged edges that are going to catch a driver. Um, if there is any imbalance or imperfection, it should be the kind of thing that the players aren't going to be punished by. But anyway, now we're up to the bridge and something which was a very unpleasant surprise because I thought these bridge barriers were indestructible and that I was gonna get away with having not having to put barriers down, which would have saved me time and efforts. But I was very, very wrong and very disappointed when I found that out right about now. So part two was very much about getting over it, both in terms of this bridge on the racetrack and me getting over the fact that I was actually gonna have to put in a little bit more effort to this part of the racetrack than I first expected. And it's just occurred to me, I probably haven't really uh, talked through the overall track concept I was going for here. So obviously I've gone for something fairly realistic, which is why I'm ensuring players cannot just fly off the bridge here. Um, but in terms of the overall circuit inspiration, I wanted sort of like a hybrid um, city and country circuit. So you've seen me building in the city so far, um, whereas now you can see us heading out towards some more country roads, which make a fairly small proportion of the circuit. You know, you're not out here for long, um, but it is nice visual variety when you're out in the, uh, you know, in the natural space. Um, and it definitely creates a, you know, a few different corner types as well, because you've got a bit more room to play with. Um, I could have a bit more control over the alignment of corners as well out here. Um, so yeah, it's that's the overall concept I'm going for. So you can see down there, the track actually loops over itself, um, which is another neat feature and kind of just a byproduct of the circuit I was going for. Um, but yeah, you can see here, I actually discovered off camera that yeah, you can smash through those yellow guardrails. Um, I don't know why I had it in my mind that that wasn't going to be a problem, but it was. And then I had to place these barriers down. And frustratingly so, this bridge actually sloped down just like a degree or two. 
Um, and as a result, I did have to adjust the angle of the barriers as we approached. And as we keep going here, we actually reach a bit of a problem section of the circuit and one that's really, really frustrating. When I do go through the build later on, I, I, um, I was placing the checkpoints down and I didn't realize that you could actually verse the AIs on this on this game. I thought tracks would be multiplayer only, but it's awesome to see that you can actually race AIs on custom circuits and they just sort of follow the racing line that you set. I thought they would have had a little bit more intelligence than they do. They're good if the racing line is good, but if you screw up the racing line when you're building the track, as I do later on today, um, they w if you screw up, they'll screw up. That's the best way I can describe it. And that corner back there is a real troublesome spot. And actually one of the corners that pretty much, oh, it's the corner that accidentally ruined this track from an AI perspective because they just missed the apex by a mile. Um, but the rest of it's solid. And that brings us to the other floor with this build mode and something I covered in my sort of first impressions video recently is that you, ca you have to build it in one go. You, you can't save a track as a draft and then sort of come back and chip away at it over multiple days. Which I respect, you know, with Super 7 in Forza Horizon 4, you know, it was pretty limited. So I kind of get that, you know, not many people would be building something over multiple days. But with all these new assets, with all these new creative tools, you could spend hours, as I did on this track, hours at a time, you know, 10 plus hours if you were building something super crazy. Um, but you have to do it in one sitting because you can't just save as a draft. You've got to publish it. Um, otherwise you'll lose it once you start building it. And then you may go, well, okay, well you just publish it and then jump in and edit it later. Um, unfortunately, you can't do that either. Once it's published, it's out there. Um, and you can't jump back in and edit, edit it. It's a tongue twist to get those two out together. Um, at this time, at least. And I'm really, really hoping that's a feature they add in the future because uh, it, it could really derail the editor for more, you know, sort of serious builders or people that just like to spend more time um, on their builds. And as a result, you can see me here. I'm desperately trying to make sure things aren't... Uh, things aren't broken or messed up at any stage because you just don't have that flexibility to fix it um, retrospectively. But yeah, here's hoping they really fix that. Um, and on the topic of videos, I just mentioned, yeah, I did have my first impressions video, which uh, you guys might find interesting if you're umming and ahhing about if this is a creative mode that you would like to try. And I've also done an asset showcase recently showing all the different objects across all the different categories, um, including many you won't be seeing in this build today because some of them are a bit more silly, things that wouldn't really suit the track I'm building. Um, so yeah, do check that one out as well if you guys like what you see in this build um, as we draw to the end of the track. You can see here we're working on our sort of hairpin complex. This is the second last corner and if I'm honest the last serious corner on the circuit. That next one is more of a uh, glorified bend although you have to be a bit careful through it. And once again using that circular prop there as the apex piece um, which was a really nice piece. It just seemed to fit the curvature of the apex real nice. And I also love those, speaking of apexes, those apex signs. They look really, really nice. Um, I love the timber finish. There's a bit of greenery on there as well. Um, yeah, just a really cool vibe. I love all the assets they've given us. Um, and you can see me turning my attention towards the start line now where we're just kind of putting the final functional pieces in place. In terms of barrier placement, we're just about there. Um, and very shortly my attention is about to shift away from the racing experience and more towards the atmosphere. So as we continue on through this build, now you're going to start seeing me play around with the aesthetics a little bit more. And trying to make it feel like a giant event that people would be excited to attend and hopefully players feel excited to race at. And so the attention turns to decorating. And honestly, this, you know, this is actually one of the more time consuming parts of the build. I really thought placing all the apex pieces and stuff was gonna be um, the most time consuming, but it wasn't so bad. It's more this section where you're bringing, you're bringing your track to life from a creative perspective. Um, this is where I spent most of my time. I thought this was gonna be easy, you know, just whack a few things down here and there and Bob's your uncle. And look, it is easy, it's not difficult, but there's so many cool assets um, that you can use that, uh, yeah, I spent a lot more time on this part than I expected. Um, and with good reason, it's so fun to, uh, to customize the look and feel of your racetrack. Um, and while the track was functional at the point where we just ended the last chapter, I really wanted to make this feel like a realistic racetrack that people would be attending. Um, so yeah, I spent a lot of time on the decorating section. 
you would have seen back there that I had a um, I had a speaker system and one of the really cool details I've noticed and can finally confirm is actually a feature I've been undecided for a while um, if I was hearing things but as you go past those speaker systems uh, the music on the radio in the car seems to go down and then you hear it more spatially coming from that speaker system which is really really neat um, such a cool detail that once again just makes the tracks feel like they're alive and that almost like your circuit could be a developer um, circuit with that sort of attention to detail. Um, and the game does it all for you in terms of the sound design, but it's just another really neat feature. Um, now, as I said, this part of the build is mainly focusing on sort of the aesthetics of the circuit, but that doesn't mean that there's room for improvement on the functional stuff like the barrier alignment. So not only am I looking to decorate the circuit here, I'm also trying to look for uh, different issues that could emerge. Um, so here earlier on in the build, I thought, you know what, you know, we can get away with a barrier or a gap in the barriers there. Um, but as I came back later on, I went, no, you know, someone has a high risk of uh, running wide and behind the barriers if I leave that gap there. So I always do uh, encourage people, if you're building something rather time consuming like this, try and spread things out for yourself. You know, don't feel like you've got to perfect it corner by corner. Uh, for me personally, I find that the thing that keeps me motivated the most is variety. So if I go around the circuit, placing the core pieces first, I find I have a bit more motivation to put care and effort into the into the tiny details um, if I come back later on. And you can see me doing that here uh, with the barriers. In terms of the logic with the barriers, there's sort of two main types I can see for uh, realistic circuits. The first is the catch fencing, which you can see on the outside of the corner, and then these concrete barriers you can see I put on the inside of the corner. And the basic logic I went for in terms of their placement was catch fencing I'll put on the outside of corners, predominantly predominantly at least um, where you know there's a high risk that cars will be heading out that direction um, and also wherever there's grandstands because naturally you want to protect the crowd um, and then low concrete barriers I'll put on the inside of corners where cars are likely to scrape at worst um, and there's no fans on the inside at the same time which is kind of a uh, philosophy you see with racetracks if you ever see a racetrack that's NASCAR tracks for example that are you know, not fully developed yet, you know, they're kind of just upgrading it as time goes on. You often see the catch fencing is always on the outside of the circuit because naturally that's where the crowd is. That's where the cars naturally want to go in the event of an accident. Um, and the inside barriers don't always have catch fencing because um, cars are less likely to end up there, but still certainly possible. So I tried applying that same logic here um, on my own build. And once again, you can see us creating a bit more of an event atmosphere. Uh, we've got a trailer down there. We've got a hot air balloon. I even had like a little hospitality marquee. I put these speakers down uh, quite a lot, not only because of that really cool sound effect, but because of the uh, color. They've got a really nice color to them. And that was something I tried doing at this stage of the build as well. I was just trying to bring each part of the circuit to life and make it feel, uh, you know, like it wasn't just the circuit that had a few bit of uh, a few sort of key festival areas. I want the whole thing to have a bit of color to it, uh, like a real life street circuit has for any major racing event. And the TVs were really good for that as well. Uh, they have a really cool animation effect on them. It would have been awesome if they, and I, I, it's the same for all racing games. Some racing games have the TVs around the circuit and it's just a uh, carbon copy of your view, um, which can be a bit yeah, it's like a glitch in the matrix whenever I play like Forza Horizon. Oh, sorry, if like Forza Motorsport and I see my own view on a TV screen. Um, but I can't wait until the day, and I don't know what the technical limitation is, but I cannot wait for the day where there's like proper replay cameras as if you're watching the race retrospectively live on those screens as you're driving around. That would be super cool. Um, I'd absolutely love that to happen, but clearly there's some sort of hardware limitation because I don't think I've ever seen a racing game do that where they're showing you sort of exterior shots of the live action um, while you're racing. Just a tiny detail, but as someone that's a huge racing fan, that's the thing that would bring immersion up to the next level for me. Now this section of the track, this was a tricky one in terms of making it um, sort of exciting from a visual perspective. I used those balloons, um, sort of those really small balloons to try and add a bit of atmosphere, but it was just flanked by buildings either side, so there wasn't too much I could do. 
And now we go, we're out here, we've got a lot more space to work with with the grandstands out in this section of the racetrack. Um, again, relying on a few key props to add a bit of, uh, a bit of visual stuff. A bit of visual stuff, a bit of uh, color. That's the word I'm looking for, visual stuff. There you go, guys, that's the new color. Um, same here, this is a really good example where you can see I've used that catch fencing philosophy on the outside of a corner and then the low concrete barriers on the inside of a corner. And you would have noticed as well, the concrete barriers kind of curve into the circuit. Uh, just in the unlikely event a car is, um, you know, on the grass or something like that. I didn't want just a solid wall starting. I wanted a barrier that gradually closed in onto the track so that once again, hopefully no one is getting stuck on any jagged pieces. This section over here was really tricky. The um, the catch fencing, in, in hindsight, I should have probably just extended it further down the track, but the catch fencing ended right under the shadow of a tree where we were in the risk of players, you know, catching that barrier as it started. So I tried adding a bit of like a hot pink asset you saw back there. I think I go back and uh, add some more assets too, but just to draw attention to the players that, hey, there's a barrier here. Don't try and cut this corner too much. Um, because you're going to have a bad time. So hopefully that works. Hopefully that draws the player's attention enough. Um, but you can see now we're at the final complex. Once again, using a lot of the same assets purely because it looks like, you know, the track is one cohesive piece. Um, and the way the budget works, I've said this in a previous video when I showcased the assets, um, the budget seems to be based on variety, not quantity of assets. So if you place a grandstand down, let's say hypothetically it takes up 6%, of your budget, you can place then as many grandstands as you like and it's not gonna climb any higher. If, however, I placed a uh, different type of grandstand, you know, a, a new asset, one without a cover, for example, that counts as a new asset and it would contribute to the budget. But with things like barriers, if you use them over and over again, only the first one you place counts towards your budget, which, which you can see in the uh, top right of the corner there. Uh, so yeah, that's a big tip for you guys as well. I'd probably explained it a bit better in the asset showcase, so definitely one to check out there. But we're getting really close to the end stages of the track now, so it's time for the finishing touches. And so we enter the final stage of the build and here's where I'm really starting to look at the details before taking a flying lap of the circuit. In addition to having the barriers curve in towards the circuit, you saw I also added some tires onto the tips as well. Once again, to just try and draw the player's attention to uh, any sort of hazards um, that could catch them out and put in a bit of detail on the start line as well. And you can see here I'm flying around the circuit just basically looking for gaps. This is, you know, again at the time where I've been away from this part of the track enough that I have a bit of sort of creative motivation back to, uh, to put in the extra details that I might not have done earlier. And speaking of details, this is where we're also putting in things like camera equipment, once again, to make it feel like this is a proper big racing event. Um, and this blue arch as well, which actually acts as a bit of a breaking marker um, in reality. I think we, uh, yeah, I think it depends what car you're in, but if you're in a really fast car, that blue arch is normally a bit of a, uh, a bit of a breaking marker for the hairpin, which is coming up. And that hairpin, which I've just flown past there, is a bit of a hazard. It really suckers you into thinking you can take a lot more speed in there than you really can. But fortunately, it's a nice wide corner. I left some uh, room on the inside as well for players to, uh, you know, widen the corner up for themselves because very often you get halfway around that thing and you realize you're in a bit of trouble. Uh, so that was one of the things I, uh, that, that's one of the hazard zones that I'd warn you about if you do want to hop in and try the circuit out for yourself. Just because we're doing detailing doesn't mean there's room for improvements as well. And you can see me trying to patch up any issues around the circuit that could once again catch players out. And here you can see I'm also trying to find some motivation to make this area look a bit more festival-like um, on the run-up to the bridge section of the circuit. You can see here I've actually got the barriers uh, sort of jutting out um, just before the bridge. I had a bit of extra overrun before the barriers curved back in for the bridge, uh, just to give players a bit more room because that's again a bit of a tight corner. Here you can see again I'm trying to cover up any hazard zones. I didn't want players turning in too early there and clipping this apex piece getting stopped in their tracks. So once again we go for more of a gradual curve. Um, into that part or into the apex of that corner. But now I'm really flying around looking for inspiration, asking myself, okay, what needs fixing? And then 
decide that it's time to place the checkpoints is what I was thinking at this stage. So <laughs> I'm actually driving back, retracing my racing line um, so that I can build this track properly. And I respect that in the speed build format, this is probably a bit intense to, uh, to all take in. But you can see me placing the checkpoints. Again, this is why I put the barriers first because you can see the real width of the corners is dependent on where those assets are. So I'm trying to put the checkpoints in, in decent places. I tried making sure that the checkpoints were always visible and that there was no chance of players missing them. So I always go for maximum width because uh, there's nothing more frustrating than missing a checkpoint in Forza Horizon 5. And as we put the final checkpoints in, I suppose now's a good time to say that I've got more tracks coming on the way. I've got an idea for a bit of a night race concept coming soon with some of the awesome floodlights that are in the game. So if you guys have any circuit ideas, please do let me know. But now it's time for a lap. So all the hard work comes down to this. We're going for our first flying tour of the circuit in a Subaru BRZ. Now the first corner here is pretty much flat out in this car, although you do have to be a bit careful about your racing line in order to pull it off. And then we approach the really high speed chicane, which you can take full throttle, but then you have to slam on the brakes right now so you can make this hairpin, which as I've mentioned can suck you in, as it did just there with me carrying way too much speed into it. This next chicane, easy by yourself, full throttle, but when there's other cars around it can get a bit tricky here we do a slight dab of the brake but the bump between the transitions of the different roads does throw the back end out as you witnessed speaking of bumps we're now in a very bumpy section of the track that really rewards smooth driving but the curbs threaten to kick the car out as you've just seen there and now the approach to the next corner is difficult because it fades to the left and then jinks to the right really really aggressively and if you get that sequence right of the double right handers you can pretty much treat it as one corner now we go through the final section of the suburban element of the track here you're going to see the extra runoff i provided being used to its full potential and it just gives you that little bit of a saving grace as you cross over the bridge now we're in the countryside elements or section of the racetrack you can get away with clipping the inside guardrails there they do collapse and now we're into a pretty high speed section of the circuit where very shortly we're going to be both braking and turning which is always tricky when you're not running ABS. This corner here, you can actually carry a lot more speed in than you first expect and there's a bit of runoff to help you out. And now we approach the final main corner if you will, a hairpin with plenty of runoff if there's a lot of cars in a small space. This last corner here can be a little bit of a problem if you're in a faster vehicle but in this it is completely flat out and we are approaching the line. So thank you so much for joining me for the ride today. Guys, the track details will be in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And I hope this will be the first of many builds in Forza Horizon 5. So if you have some track ideas, be sure to leave them down in the comments as I'd love to try some of your ideas out as well as mine. I've got plenty of other creative content coming very soon, including stuff from the Far Cry map editor and even the GTA creator, which recently added go-kart racing. Like this track, it's proving to be a whole lot of fun to play around with and I cannot wait to share that that build and many more with you guys soon.